Okay, so good afternoon all. So today we will start with the uh, new chapter of the industrial engineering. The name of the chapter is ergonomics and the industrial safety. Okay, so this particular chapter is totally different uh, from the chapter number one and the chapter number two, whatever we have covered. This, but it is a requirement that ergonomics concept, it is one of the concept which is also implemented in the industry and the industrial safety, it is one of the important parameters which plays very important role when we are working in the industry. So the name of the chapter is ergonomics and the industrial safety. So these are the two different concepts. But if we are implementing the ergonomic concept in the industry, then and then only industrial safety will be the possible. Therefore, these both the concepts are different, but they are correlated with the each other. So one by one, we will cover that particular concept. What is meant by the ergonomics? So which ergonomics concept we are considering in the industry? And if we are not considering that particular Uh, just wait, maybe some network problem is there. So, when this particular ergonomic concept is implemented in the industry, how the industry safety will be taking place? If we are not applying that particular ergonomic concept in the industry, maybe while designing the layout, when the operator is working on the machine. So, if I will consider that particular ergonomic concept uh, uh, in the industry, then how it will be affect on the industrial safety? Therefore, both the concepts are totally different, but they are correlated with the, each other. Okay, so in this particular chapter, we are going to study this particular content. Now the first definitions, what are the important definitions are they related to the, what is meant by the ergonomics, what is meant by the industrial safety, then the proper relation between the man and machine system. So when the machine is in working condition, maybe that machine is operated by the, uh, that particular operator also, maybe some semi-automatic machines are there, some fully automatic machines are there, some are the manual operated machines are there, that man machine system and their types also we are going to discuss. Then types of displays. So in the industry, maybe uh, the worker is operating on the different types of the workstations. So maybe he's, uh, he's working on some of the lathe machines, then drilling machines. So at that time, some displays are provided. Then which types of the displays are to be provided? That types of displays, types of control devices, then manual material handling equipment that we are going to discuss in this particular chapter. Then anthropometry. 
so this particular point indicates the dimensions of the human body because what happen if we are working on the machine so near to that particular machine or near to that particular work station some chairs are provided some table is provided so whatever that particular chair we are using for the sitting purpose whatever the table we are using for some of the uh, working purpose at that time that particular chair is having some of the standard dimension because when the worker is sitting in that particular chair or if that worker is working on that particular table the dimension should be comfortable if the worker is sitting in that particular chair and during the sitting or while sitting he is not comfortable when he, he is sitting in that particular chair so at that time as for the dimensions the chair is not properly designed means when that operator or that particular person is sitting in that particular chair he getting some of the fatigue he is uncomfortable when he is sitting in that particular chair so for that purpose in order to avoid such type of the situations so we are applying that anthropometric concept in which we are measuring the dimensions of the human body and according to that particular dimensions we are designing our work station means as per the requirement of the that particular operator we are designing the chair so he can uh, sit in that particular ch chair in the comfort position then whatever the table we are using for the uh, working purpose that table can be designed as per the requirement of that particular operator only that means without any fatigue without any problems without any stress he can work in the effective manner so that for that purpose initially we have to take the dimensions of that particular human body and that we are going to discuss in this particular anthropometry then design of workplace and working condition design of the workplace means if the operator is working on any workstation before that particular operation starts we have to design it properly that means sometimes that particular operator he has to switch on number of buttons simultaneously he has to operate some of the levers he has to operate some of the pedals he has to switch on some number of switches so all the such types of the important switches all the such types of the important pedals then some important control uh, devices that we have to provide near to that particular work station only that means without any fatigue without any disturbance that operator can start that particular buttons very easily he can operate that particular lever without any fatigue so such types of the design of the workplace also we are going to discuss in this particular chapter and working condition at which, at which location he is working that location should be comfort so if that location will not be comfort that operator will not be work in the effective manner maybe during the working condition he can operate under the fatigue or he can operate that particular machine under the stress if he is operating under the fatigue if he is in stress condition at that time automatically it affects on their performance if the operators or the workers are not works in the effective manner automatically it will be affects on the overall production maybe your production time may, may be increases your operating cost may be increases and finally it will be affects on your productivity so as per the ilo ilo means international labor organization whatever the some rules are made under the international labor organization according to that norms we have to apply that particular ergonomic concepts or we have to design that particular workplace in the proper working condition if i will implement or if i will apply all those concepts in this particular industry then and then only there may be possibility of less accidents if the design of the uh, the workstation is not properly designed during work condition if that particular worker is works in the uh, some stress if he is works in some uh, effort at the time there may be chances of the accident therefore in the last part we are going to discuss about the basic definition of the accidents what is the basic definition of accident what are the causes due to which reason the accidents are happening in that particular industry if accidents are happening then how to prevent that particular accidents that prevention also we are going to discuss in this particular chapter in order to avoid such types of the accidents which factors which safety measures or which safety devices we have to provide in that particular industry maybe some of the workers are uh, working in some noisy operations some noisy operations are there and that noisy operations will be affects on the performance of the operator in such a condition which types of the safety devices maybe we can provide some standard headphones so the effect of noise will be less if the worker is operating in some uh, 
or hit region or maybe he is operating in some heavy duty applications at that time as per the requirement we have to provide some goggles we have to provide some helmets we have to provide some uh, hand gloves so such types of the safety devices also we have to provide in that particular industry so due to that safety devices that operator or that particular worker can be works in the effective manner without any accidents and if sometimes if the accidents are happening so at that time there may be some insurance policy you know if uh, there is a accident of any vehicle if there is accident of any person so some insurance policies are there that insurance policies can provide some amount that to that particular worker so such types of the insurance policies are also there as per the industrial labor organization that policies that insurance act also we are going to discuss in this particular chapter in addition to that if the worker works in the effective manner or maybe he if he is doing his work uh, in extra time so for that particular extra time we have to provide some additional wages or we have to provide some additional incentives some additional amount also we have to provide it. so which types of the incentives which types of the wage acts we have to provide to that particular worker which types of the insurance are available in the industry that all the parts we are going to discuss in this particular chapter that means initially we will start with the basic concept of the ergonomics how that particular ergonomic concept will be implemented in the industry after that we will discuss about the anthropometry that means by measuring the dimensions of the body then and then only we have to go for the designing of that particular workplace and then the last part we are going to discuss about the accident so what is the definition of accident their causes their prevention which types of the safety devices are used in case of a industry and in addition to that which types of the additional wages acts in which types of the insurances are provided to that particular employees if the accidents are happening so this is the overall syllabus of this particular chapter which is related to the ergonomics and the industrial safety now we will start with the very first and the basic point what is mean by the ergonomics before starting that particular ergonomics initially we will discuss about the important concept that is related to the aesthetics and the ergonomics so there is a basic difference between the aesthetics and the ergonomics aesthetics means aesthetic represents the appearance of the product aesthetic represents the appearance of the product appearance in the sense how this product will be look like what is the color of that particular product so such types of the appearance color of the product then their picture how it is looking so such types of the appearance related to the concept will be considered in the aesthetics but in case of a ergonomics the ergonomic concept is totally related to the the proper ergonomic concept is totally related to the the workplace design or the system design to that particular worker if you take the example of vehicle let's take a example of one of the vehicle of the toyota you know about the innova the innova is one of the vehicle of the toyota so now that particular innova it is having some good features if you think about their color the color will be very good if you think about its shape the shape of the innova is also very good so this particular shape the color it will be considered in the aesthetic factor only aesthetic in the sense how to product will be look like but whether that innova is comfortable to the passenger or not that concept will be considered in the ergonomics that means whatever the vehicle we are using for the passengers if that vehicle is comfortable that means without any fatigue without any stress if he can sit in that particular vehicle means we can say that the ergonomic concept can be considered in that particular vehicle you know that so there are different types of the vehicles are there maybe uh, for the toyota the sitting arrangement will be different maybe it is more comfortable if you compare that particular toyota with the suzuki maruti suzuki vehicles so maybe the suzuki is not that much comfortable if i will compare with the tata motors then the tata motors also somewhat comfortable as compared to the ergonomics comfortable means what is the vehicle is designed to that particular passenger and if that passenger is comfortable in that particular vehicle without any stress without any fatigue he can travel the maximum distance means the ergonomics concept can be considered in that particular 
vehicle. If that particular workstation or if that particular vehicle is comfortable to that particular operator or to that particular passenger, means the economic con economic concept can be considered. That means that person or that particular passenger can sit in very effective manner. He can drive that particular vehicle for the long distances, whatever the gear are using in order to increase the speed. That gear also it can be easily operated, whatever the clutch, brake, all such types of the additional devices are provided. So such types of the components we can operate in very effective manner means the ergonomic concept can be considered. But if you think about the shape of the vehicle, if we think about the color of that vehicle, that color, that shape, it will not be considered in the ergonomic concept. All that particular parts will be considered in the aesthetic, means how the product will be look like. So the aesthetic concept and the ergonomic concepts are totally different. So in this particular chapter, as per the Indian Labor Organization, as per the Indian Labor Organization, the definition of ergonomics is defined. So actually, the term ergonomics, whatever this particular word is there, that word is derived from the Greek. It is one of the Greek word. Ergonomics is the Greek word which is having the two meanings. The meaning of the ergon. The meaning of the ergon is the work. The ergonomics is one of the Greek word. And if I will divide this particular word, ergonomics, in the two different words, in that first word is the ergon. Ergon means work and nomi. It is related to the natural law. So the meaning of that particular ergonomics means whenever or wherever we are working during that particular working condition or during that particular workstation, we have to apply some natural principles or we have to apply some natural laws due to which that particular worker or that particular operator can be works in the effective manner. If while operating on any machine, maybe lathe machine, maybe drilling machine, or maybe CNC machine. The operator is under the fatigue. Maybe he has to shift the lever again and again. He has to press the pedal again and again. He has to start the button again and again. But while starting that particular button, while operating the lever, while pressing the any pedal, he is in fatigue. That time we can say that the ergonomic concept will not be considered in that particular machine. If that operator can be easily press that particular button, if he can operate that particular lever without any fatigue, if he or she, if he can press the pedal which is provided in that particular machine without any fatigue, means we can say that the ergonomic concept can be implemented in that particular workstation. So ergonomic concept we are implementing means whatever the workstation we are designing, that workstation can be designed in the proper way due to which there should not be any fatigue, there should not be any stress while working on that particular workstation. Therefore, here I have done the ergonomic studies is human capabilities in the relation of the work demand. So whatever the human capabilities are there, that human capabilities are mostly related to the work demands. Therefore, here the ergonomics is the science of designing the job equipment. The ergonomics is the science of designing the job equipment and the workplace which is fit to the worker. Whatever the job we are designing, whatever the equipment we are designing, whatever the workplace or the workstation we are designing, that all the equipments, all the jobs, all the workplaces should be fit to that particular worker. If it is fit to that particular worker, then and then only that worker can be worked in the effective manner without any stress, without any fatigue. If that workplace is not fit to that particular worker, it is not possible to work in the effective manner. Therefore, the proper economic design is necessary to prevent the repetitive strain injuries which can develop over the time and can be lead to your lead to long term disability. It is necessary to consider the all the ergonomic concepts in the workplaces in order to avoid the repetitive strain injury. That means repetitively, if such types of the strain injury, such types of the fatigues are arises while working on that particular machine or any equipment, at that time there may be possibility to 
increase your time if that workers are not works in the effective manner if he is working with the fatigue if, if he is working with the stress automatically whatever the lead time is required to convert that particular raw material into the finished goods that lead time is also goes on increasing if the timing of the production is increases your production cost is increases if the production cost is increases automatically it will be affects on your productivity therefore that ergonomic concept as per the industrial labor organization we have to implement this particular ergonomic concept in the designing of the workstation therefore we can design your job we can design your equipment we can design your workplace in such a way that that particular equipment that job or that workplace is fit to that particular worker if it is fit to that particular worker then he can work in the effective manner therefore we have to apply this particular ergonomic concepts in the industry therefore the ergonomics world is divided into the two types first one is the ergon which is called as a work and nomi means it is called as a natural loss also at the bottom side here i have written the design of the human task man machine system and the effective accomplishment of the job including displays for the presenting the information human sensor controls for human operations and the complex machine system so when we are working or any operator is working on any machine so maybe some display devices are provided near to that particular machine if that particular display device is properly visible to that particular operator then and then only he can keep the information continuously if there is a maximum distance between that particular display and the operator and that operator is unable to see that particular display means while observing that particular display that operator may be in fatigue because that display is not properly visible whatever the numbers are there on that particular display maybe it may be digital or it may be some quantitative display so but that display is not properly visible to that operator means while observing that particular display if that operator is in fatigue again it will create the problem therefore whatever the displays are provided in the industry whatever the control devices are provided whatever the sensors are provided all should be provided near to that particular operator only therefore that operator can see the display continuously without any fatigue and he can pass the information again and again also what are the control devices are provided maybe uh, control devices are provided in the form of uh, lever is there maybe another one rod is there if all the such types of the devices are provided near to that particular worker only means he can easily operate that particular machine but to operate that particular machine if he has to travel long distance or maybe while shifting the lever from one position to the another position the maximum power is required again it will create the problem means while working on the work station if the workers is not work in the effective manner it will totally affects on that particular total system therefore wherever the complex man machine systems are there because some of the machines are there you know some of the machines are there which are totally manually operated some machines are semi automatic in which once the operator will start that particular machine if he will feed that particular program machine will work and he will convert the raw material into the finished goods some of the standard machines are there in which they are fully automatic because once i will start the button machine will start automatically he will perform his job automatically machine will be stop but maximum times the machine may be fully manually operated it may be semi operated or it may be fully automatic some amount of human interaction should be there because in fully automatic machine also at least human is required or operator is required to start that particular machine therefore wherever the man machine systems are there machine man machine system in the sense where the man and machine both are works together that particular system is called as a man machine system therefore wherever the complex man machine systems are there in such types of the complex man machine systems we have to apply this particular ergonomic concepts therefore that particular operator or the workers can be work on that particular machine without any fatigue without any fatigue or without any stress if he is working without any fatigue with full effectiveness then and then only there may be possibility to convert your job from raw material to the finished goods in less time 
if time is less your production cost is also decreases and automatically your productivity is also goes on increasing therefore whatever the work station we are designing while designing it we have to apply this particular ergonomics concept so as per the industrial labor organization sorry international labor organization the ergonomics is the concept which is also called as a human engineering the ergonomics it is one of the concept which is also called as a human engineering okay so this is about the basic definitions related to the ergonomics it is having the three important objectives it is having the three important objectives in that first objective is to enhance the efficiency and the effectiveness with which the activities means which work is carried out so as to increase the convenience of use reduce the errors and increase in the productivity so whatever the works we are carrying out in order to achieve the efficiency and the effectiveness in that particular work in order to achieve the efficiency and the effectiveness of that particular work it can be carried out in such way that we have to reduce all the types of errors so there may be increasing in the productivity means if i have to achieve the efficiency and the effectiveness in your work and if i have not implemented any ergonomic concept in that particular industry it is not possible to achieve the efficiency or it is not possible to achieve the effectiveness of that particular work so in order to achieve that particular efficiency and the effectiveness we have to first implement that particular ergonomic concept in that particular industry then and then there may be possibility of reduction of the errors and it will be increase your productivity the second objective is the to enhance the certain desirable human values including safety reduce the stresses fatigue and improve the quality of the life so the main objective of the industry is it is related to the desirable human values in the human values in the sense whenever we are working on any type of machine at that time the safety is one of the important concept which we have to consider because some of our workers are operating in some of the heat regions are there some heavy duty press machines are there some heavy duty applications are there in a such conditions we have to provide some safety concepts also safety concept in the sense we have to provide some safety devices we have to uh, uh, give some uh, safety related to information to that particular operator therefore the safety is one of the first factor which will be considered in the human values then the reduced the errors obviously the errors are obtained no problem but if i have to reduce that particular errors in order to reduce that particular errors it is necessary or it is very important to design your work station in the effective manner or design your work station properly if your work station is not properly designed at that time it is not possible to operate in the effective manner sometimes we are providing the skilled operator sometimes we are providing the skilled operators but your work station is not properly designed at that time again there may be possibility of increasing the errors therefore we have to reduce that particular errors and in addition to that we have to reduce the fatigue we have to reduce particular errors and we have to reduce that particular fatigue fatigue in the sense you know about the fatigue when we are working on any machine when we are working on any machine if we will work in the effective manner without any fatigue without any pain to your hand without any pain to your body without any pain to your legs if such type of the situations are there then and there only we can work in the without fatigue but sometimes if i have to start the button maybe you are there may be pain to your hand if i have to uh, see the display which is having the maximum distance from the operator and to that particular display again there may be trouble or there may be fatigue to your eye also in order to observe the readings of that particular display if i have to operate the lever if i have to press the pedal again there may be pain to my hand or there may be pain to my to my uh, particular leg also so such types of the fatigue are also uh, uh, 
introduced in this particular work station. So, the major of the objectives of that particular economics, we have to consider the desirable human values in which we have to consider the safety, reduce the error, and reduce the fatigue. Then and then only there may be possibility of improve the quality of the life. If we will provide all the types of safety devices, all the safety instructions, if errors will be raised, there will be the less fatigue, then and then only I can say that the quality of your work can be improved. Therefore, the third object is based on this is a design based on this particular first tool. In general, the scope and objective of the ergonomics is designing for human use and optimizing working and the living condition. Designing for the human use. Whatever machine we are designing, whatever the product we are designing, whatever the equipments we are designing, whatever the workstation we are designing, that designing should be based on the human use only. If we are designing the workstation and at that time we are not considering the human effect, there is no use of that particular design. Because once the machine is designed, workstation is designed, the operators are working on that particular design. Therefore, the concept of the ergonomics is totally based on designing of the human use and optimize or optimizing the working and the living condition. You have to optimize your work, that means in less and less time, in less and less fatigue. If you will complete your work, that particular process is called as a optimizing the work and the living condition. Wherever we are operating, that particular condition, that particular living condition also we have to design or we have to go for the optimization. If you will design that particular workstation as per the requirement of the human beings or as per the requirement of the operator, then and then only there may be possibility to work in the effective manner. If you take the example of simple vehicle again, what is the vehicle we have purchased? In that particular vehicle, we are not sitting in the comfortable manner. There may be fatigue when we are sitting in that particular vehicle. Means the vehicle is not properly designed as per the requirement of the passenger. If that vehicle will be designed as per the requirement of the passenger, as per the comfort to the passenger, means we can reduce the fatigue, we can reduce all the types of error. But if it is not designed as per the requirement of the passenger, there may be possibility of the fatigue to that particular worker. Therefore, the last definition is made common like that, designing for the human use. Wherever the operators are working, wherever the persons are using any type of job, that machine, that equipment, that job or that work station can be designed for the human use only. And that particular concept is called as a ergonomic concept. So these are the major three objectives of the ergonomics. Then, We'll discuss about the, some of the applications. First application is the control of physical work environment. Control of physical work environment. Wherever we are working, means sometimes the operators can be working in some of the air conditioning systems. Some operators are working in some uh, hot temperature uh, rooms. Maybe uh, you know about some of the manufacturing processes are there. Maybe hardening is there, tempering is there. In such types of the applications, very high temperature is there. In such temperatures, what we have to do? We have to uh, do the work. So at that time, whatever the work environment is there, whether that work environment is feasible or not, that also we have to check. If we are working in the air conditioning system, so we can work in the effective manner. Sometimes, if there is a maximum cooling, in case of air conditioning rooms, if there is a maximum cooling, at that time also, we are becomes uncomfortable. Due to the cold region, we are also becomes uncomfortable. Sometimes, some heat region is there, some temperature regions are there. At that particular temperature also, sometimes we are comfortable. But if the temperature is increases beyond the limit, at that time, that particular person or that particular operator is uncomfortable. So, in such locations also, we have to apply the concept of ergonomics. Whether we have to work in the air conditioning system or whether we have to work in the temperature systems. So, that work environments also, in that particular work environments also, we have to apply the ergonomic concepts. Then, next application is the design of the man machine system. Just now we have discussed. Some machines are totally manually operated. Some machines are 
semi automatic machines are there and some machines are be fully operated if the manual operated machines are there means without any operator it is not possible to start the machine so in such a condition that machine can be in such way that machine is fully manually operated in such a condition that machine can be designed in such way that it should be comfortable to that particular operator if the handling of the machine is totally depends on the operator and during handling that operator is in fatigue at that time the machine is not designed as per the requirement of the operator so while designing your machine the effect of person or the effect of man also we have to consider therefore while designing the machine maybe it is fully automatic it is semi automatic and it is totally totally manually operated any type of machine whenever we are designing at that time the effect of man also we have to consider while designing that particular man machine system then third one is a design of controls and the displays controls maybe there are different types of the levers are there if you take the example of vehicle in that particular vehicle that uh, gear lever is there so while shifting the gear from 1 to 2 to 2 to 3 if there is a maximum fatigue at that time that particular driver is in uncomfortable position or if he will get the fatigue to shift that particular gear that means again there is a problem so while increasing the speed of that particular vehicle if the gear can be shifted from 1 to 2 to 2 to 3 to 3 to 4 in the effective manner then there should not be any fatigue so in any type of machine some standard levers are there some knobs are there some another switches are there so that particular switches control devices levers can be designed as per the requirement of the operator if i have designed any lever and it is not possible to operate that particular lever in the effective manner there is no use of that particular lever because while operating it creates the problem to that particular worker therefore while designing the different types of the control devices the effect of the ergonomics also we have to consider in display which types of display should be provided whether we have to provide the qualitative display or whether we have to provide the quantitative display quantitative means directly we will get the result in the form of quantity maybe if i have to measure the pressure so uh, the circular reading will be given on that particular pressure gauge maybe uh, 50 150 50 100 150 200 250 300 so like that if you will get the output that particular displays are called as a quantitative display that means you will get the output in the form of quality quantity but some qualitative displays are there that means by observing the different types of the graph by observing the nature of that particular graph we have to obtain your solution so which types of the displays we have to provided for which types of the machines that is it also we have to consider in this particular chapter that is design of the controls and the design of the displays which types of the display is feasible to that particular operator or to that particular person that requirement also we have to satisfy then next accident fatigue and the safety this is very important accident fatigue if the operator is working on machine in fatigue there may be possibility of accidents if the operator is working in the effective manner without any fatigue there is no any chance to happen the accidents but while operating the lever while pressing the pedal while starting the buttons if he is not working in the effective manner there may be possibility of accidents and in order to avoid that particular accidents we have to provide or we have to consider some safety norms also so in that case means in case of a accident fatigue and the safety norms also your ergonomic concept plays very very important and the last important application is the workplace design workplace design in the sense one workstation is there and in that particular workstation so many machines are there maybe first machine will be the lathe machine second machine will be the uh, drilling machine again third will be the lathe machine again fourth will be the milling machine so by combining number of machines at a single point that particular concept is called as a workstation and if all the machines are operated by the two three operators maybe three machines are there and the three machines are operated by the two persons only at that time while operating on that particular machine there should not be any fatigue means initially you will handle the lathe machine once 
the work of the lathe machine is over then he can shift to the drilling machine once the work of the drilling machine is over then he will shift to the milling machine if such types of the proper sequence will be designed means that worker or that operator can be work in the effective manner without any fatigue at that time your efficiency can be increases man workplace design wherever we are working wherever the operators are working that workplace should be properly designed that's why i have given the example of the four wheelers what is the purpose of that particular four wheeler to tra- to uh, take the passengers from one location and to drop at the another location but while traveling that particular maximum distance if that particular passenger is sitting in that particular vehicle that vehicle should provide the comfort that vehicle should provide comfort to that particular passenger means that vehicle can be designed as per the requirement of the passenger therefore we can easily say that uh, the sitting arrangement of the tata motors is very good the sitting arrangement of the maruti suzuki vehicle it is not that much good the uh, sitting arrangement of that particular innova or the sitting arrangement of that particular fortuner it is very good so we are saying like that means that particular vehicle is comfortable to that particular passenger that means as per the requirement of that particular passenger that vehicle is properly designed maybe there is a special system is there maybe there is sitting arrangement is there maybe in that particular vehicle some additional features are provided maybe some small uh, tv is provided maybe some additional requirement all the requirements can be satisfied and in that particular vehicle means as per the requirement of that particular passenger the vehicle is designed means we can say that the all the ergonomic concept we have considered while designing that particular vehicle therefore that vehicle can be provide the proper comfort to that particular passenger therefore that concept is called as a workplace design means we are designing the that particular workplace in the proper working condition so these are the basically five applications one is the working environment second is the man machine system then different types of the control devices different types of the displays while designing that also we have to consider the or we have to apply the ergonomic concept then accidents why accidents are happening which types of the fatigues are there which types of the safety norms we have to provide that also uh, considered in the ergonomic concept and last important part which is implemented in the industry this last factor workplace design it is mostly implemented in the industry because if your workplace is properly designed then your operator can be works in the effective manner so these are the major five applications which will be uh, play a very important role for the ergonomic concept then man machine system this is very important what it indicates the man machine system the sphere a man machine system is a combination of one or more human one or more human being and one or more physical components interacting to bring out from the given inputs to some desired outputs without any machine output is not possible without any human or without any operator the output is also not possible therefore this particular system is called as a man machine system man machine system the name itself suggests that where the man and the machines both are works together man machine system means the man and machine both are works together and in this system is a combination of one or more operator or one or more humans and one or more physical components component in the sense i can consider one or two machines or more than two machines therefore this man machine system is a combination of one or more humans and it is interacting with one or more components or the machines in order to bring your input into the desired output because if i have to convert your raw material into the finished goods without interaction of the man and machine that conversion is not possible without interaction of the man and machine that conversion is not possible because without any operator it is not possible to handle the machine even machine is fully automatic at least for holding the job at least for removing the job at least to start that particular machine 
somewhat interaction is required in case of a fully automatic machine also therefore without the interaction of the man and machine your desired output will not be possible therefore this man machine system is the combination of one or more than humans and those are interacted with the number of machines then this system consists of any types of physical objects devices equipment facility activities performed by the man so in this particular man machine system it consists of a different types of physical objects physical objects may be some products are there some raw material is there this is one object then some devices means if i have to measure the dimensions we have to use the measuring devices if i have to travel the component from one location to the another location again i have to use the material handling devices means this particular system includes some physical objects some devices some equipments in the sense some machines some additional facility we have to use and activities performed by the man so in this man machine system in this man machine system it consists of different types of the physical objects maybe your raw material is there or maybe your object is there then some material handling devices are there some equipments are there some facilities are there some other activities which are performed by the man as well if all these particular equipments all the devices all the facilities all the objectives are designed in the proper way then that particular man can be operates in the effective manner if material handling device is not properly designed at that time that operator is unable to uh, use that particular device if equipment or the machine is not properly designed that operator is unable to work on that particular machine so whatever the facility we are providing to that particular operator all the facility should be properly designed then third there is only one way to characterize the man machine system in the degree of manual versus machine control if i have to characterize if i have to characterize the proper relation between the man machine system we have we, we can go for the comparison related to the manual versus machine control manual means the machine is fully operated by the man only means from holding the job from removing the job and what is the number of operations we are performing from the start point to the end point this is called as a total manually control and next which is the machine control machine control means only i have to hold the job and once i will start the machine automatically machine will perform all the types of operation and at the end only i have to remove that particular job such types of the machines are called as a machine control therefore there is a only one way to characterize the man machine system is the degree of manual versus machine control if i have to give the comparison between the man machine system that comparison can be provided based on the manual operation or based on the total automatic operation so through manual operation which type of the uh, activities we are performing and through the automatic which type of the activities we are performing so that particular concept we are going to discuss in this particular man machine system and this is the one sample figure you can see here this particular man machine system it can be properly designed as per the ergonomic consideration so the man is present at the right side in front of that the machine is there okay so this is the machine here i have written the word machine in that particular machine some controls are provided at the top some machine displays are provided and this particular machine is operated by this particular man only so that man will uh, operate some of the control devices then machine will start then what are the output you will get that output can be observed through this particular display and through this particular display if you have observed that there may be some corrections or uh, if i have to change some of the movement again from that particular display that operator will get the information and according to that particular output that particular man again it will do the some corrections in that particular control devices and again the machine will start working that means this particular system is called as a closed loop system initially machine will be started by the operator machine will work according to that you can observe your output on that particular display 
if your information is correct need not required to go for the modification but through this particular output you have observed that now i have to change this particular tool or i have to change this particular control device so that signal will be taken by that particular operator through this particular display device so as per the requirement again he will do the corrective actions again machine will work again he will give the output that means continuously this closed loop system is going on still you will need not got the desired output if your output is totally finalized as per our requirement then you can stop your corrective actions and you have to stop your machine otherwise you have to continue this particular process again and again still you will not get the desired output so this particular system is called as a closed loop system in which you will get the feedback through this particular display device if the feedback is achievable you will not required to go for the corrective actions if your output is not desirable again i have to make the corrections again machine will work again display will give the output again this information is given to that particular operator again if corrections are required again i will operate the controls again it will be much i have implemented this particular closed loop system means i have considered the ergonomic concept in this particular machine that means without operator it is not possible to handle the machine without operator it is not possible to handle the machine therefore this particular concept is called as a man machine closed loop system where the role of operator and the role of machine both are plays very very important role even this machine is totally manually operated semi automatic or the fully automatic in the fully automatic also some amount of instruction of the some amount of some amount of interaction of that particular man is required at least to hold the job to remove the job and to start the machine so this particular system is called as a man machine system which is to be designed as per the ergonomic consideration okay so this is about the man machine system okay so with this today we will stop here remaining part we will take in the next lecture